Hi, everyone. It is still June 8, 2021. I have some news about our fabulous economy, as well as news about real estate. But first, let me show you this, because if you are one of those who had your password stolen, you might want to change it. Mother of all password leaks, billions of credentials exposed. It was posted on a hacker forum. 8.4 billion passwords have been stolen. So this is, well, important if you are one of them. Change your password. All righty. I will link below. You can read more about it. Power prices surge amid air conditioning binge in U.S. Northeast. Cost of electricity in New England tripled, nearly tripled from one year ago. Commodity prices are surging, adding to inflation fears. How about inflation reality? Higher prices for commodities are flowing through to more companies and consumers, making it harder for central bankers to ignore them. Ignore those prices. Ignore the inflation. Oh, yes, everything's rosy. Don't you worry about anything. The lies that we hear. Deutsche Bank warns of global time bomb coming due to rising inflation. There are still those who are warning hyperinflation coming. Prices of food skyrocketing. Shipping costs surge. Raises retail price pressures and inflation risks. Yes, all, all of the increases anywhere, we pay for it. The shipping costs, the, the cost of containers, it's staggering. That means a whole lot of people won't be able to afford those prices. That means we'll have shortages of those imports. We used to be an export nation. Now we are an import nation, and we get most of our products from China. China. So the shipping containers, too, I should have pulled it up, uh, seem to be happening. Uh, it, it seems to be happening more and more that we've got these disasters, the loss of shipping containers. The last one that I saw was in an Asian country and a crane or no, 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 no. They were moving a barge, I guess, and it hit another barge or shipping container. I can't remember, but the shipping containers were destroyed, a whole lot of them. Before that, I saw on the news shipping containers, a barge. Well, sorry, but shipping containers just fell into the waters. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, I, I would say virtually every, every so-called disaster that we hear is caused by oops, an accident, is, is just a, a deliberate destruction to bring about higher prices, shortages. Amazon punishes competitors wherever it can. That is our nation. Our nation is, if you have money, then destroy the person who has less money. What a bunch of fun it's been. It's monopoly. Monopoly uh, in real time, in real world, with an awful lot of people who just don't care about anybody else. But I brought this up for a reason. Um, but I also want to say that our housing market, it's booming Housing prices skyrocketing, not just in Austin, but all over. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this thread. 
on cultural husbandry site or uh, Twitter page. This, and I will link below. This thread provides an awful lot of information for everybody. I'm sure you know housing prices are skyrocketing. I'm sure you've come across headlines or heard in the news. Wow. Um, someone is purchasing homes for 30% over the market price. Okay, this thread links to an awful lot of articles, which I'm going to show you. And just before that, let me show you what's happening. This is happening all over our country. Idaho tent cities coming soon to where you live. Tent cities? Really? The super rich bought this Idaho town and regular folks now may have to live in tents. I read the article. Uh, it's mm, heartbreaking. Average home price in Ketchum, Idaho, n uh, around 900000 A million dollars. Average price? A million dollars. Folks interviewed in the article describe life in the area as one where you have to work three jobs just to have a home to live in. Like the rest of Idaho, the Idaho resort town has seen home values skyrocket. The entire state is seeing apartment rents continue to rise. And those who live in Idaho now are finding themselves uh, homeless, living in tents, because they can't afford the rent. Well, uh, particularly in the mega regions of the country. The uh, rents are skyrocketing, which means that an awful lot of people are going to be homeless. More. More than that stagnant number that has remained the same for pff, ever, half a million. You really think we only have half a million homeless in our country? So, um, you can read this article. It truly is heartbreaking. And literally people who have lived in Ketchum, worked in Ketchum, because there's an awful lot of people who want to sell their homes and I, I have no doubt that they've been approached to sell their home. They're kicking people out and raising the rents. They're selling their homes to people who then rent them out at much higher prices. See, I don't like this. The reason why we're in this nightmare is because most Americans only think about themselves and they don't care about other people. Most. So if you're somebody who doesn't behave like that, don't consider yourself in the most. But it is how most operate. They can kick people out, leave people homeless, even the elderly, they don't care. See, a whole lot of people are claiming that it's capitalism. Capitalism? Really? First of all, we've never had that free market capitalist society. We've had an awful lot of greedy people playing Monopoly. Taking, you know, just gobbling up as much... Uh, assets as they can to be in that 1% and too friggin' bad for everybody else. And our government sure does create the policies, pass the legislation for all of that to happen. I did post a video, I think, I don't know, a year ago. 
I was really surprised at how fast, at how fast homes were being sold. It was like, are you, what? You put your house on the market and you have an offer almost immediately and boom, it's sold. How corporations are buying up houses, robbing families of the American dream. Yep. So, you know, for years we have been saying the American dream is on life support. The American dream was essentially the middle class owning their own home. And ownership allowed the middle class to increase their wealth. Ownership provided a security sometimes for generations within that family. Well, that is essentially dead. The middle class has been pretty much decimated. So if you're still in it, consider yourself lucky for now. So what's happening with our real estate? How is it that people are actually buying up homes 30% uh, over market value. What, what, how? Well, Buffett, Hughes, buying up many of the single family homes that have long sustained the U.S. middle class. Disgusting, greedy, despicable, psychopathic, subhuman hybrids of some, something. Companies. Rich investors like Buffett, like Hughes, buying up many of the single-family homes that have long sustained the U.S. middle class. Companies own around 300,000 U.S. homes so far, and it is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, these companies aren't just depriving potential homeowners of a place to call their own. They're destroying the ability for thousands of middle-class American families to accumulate wealth. Home price appreciation has historically been how Americans achieve financial prosperity. Unlike stocks and bonds, middle-class, their ownership has been with the home. Roughly half of housing wealth is owned by America's middle class. The bonanza really took off when during the Obama years, right after the 2008-2009 uh, subprime housing disaster when with over 1.6 million foreclosed homes in the United States, in 2011, Morgan Stanley issued a report called A Rentership Society. And that is where we are heading fast, really fast, actually. A surge in the number of renters and a potentially massive opportunity for investors to convert the glut of repossessed homes into rental properties. And don't think for one second that that market crash, 2008, 2009, wasn't deliberate. The subprime mortgages handed out, deliberate, to bring about that housing bubble crash, boom, you're out of your house, now I own it for nothing. By 2012, more than $1 billion had been raised by investors for the purpose of doing just that. The Carlisle Group, Warren Buffett, American Homes for Rent. Founded by billionaire self-storage magnet Wayne Hughes. This guy. These are disgusting. Just repulsive. Two-legged. I, 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 don't, I don't. They're so not human beings. They're. So that guy, Hughes, would own about 48,000 houses by the end of 2016. There is even a lobby organization 
yeah, the National Rental Home Council to look after their interests in government, such as defeating rent control laws. Okay, I will link below to these articles um, if you want to read the details. There's a lot of them. Wall Street upending Nashville neighborhoods. These professors want to know what's going on in Nashville. Well, a whole lot. Um, property records in August found that six out of state investment groups owned at least 4,900 homes in these areas, several neighborhoods, fast growing neighborhoods in Tennessee. Some of the biggest, biggest players are American Homes for Rent, Progress Residential, Starwood, Waypoint Homes. Investors targeted Sunbelt cities with inexpensive real estate, such as Nas Nashville, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Dallas, Tampa, Florida, beginning around 2011. Oh, so it wasn't just Warren Buffett, American Homes for Rent, and Hughes. Seems there's an awful lot of players in this game. Aiming, they're aiming for neighborhoods with low crime, good schools, affordable homes. They drive up prices, make it harder for first-time home buyers to enter the market. And what are they doing with all of those homes? It's the Rentership Society today, turning them into rentals. You know, they pay cash. They close in five days. They forego the inspection. Every single time it's going to be sold to the fund. Uh, if you're trying to get into the market, it's impossible for the individual. Southern California, some neighborhoods deteriorated after investors bought blocks full of single-family homes post-crisis uh, post um, the 2008-9 crisis, rented them out uh, after making initial investments in the properties, companies became absentee landlords. These communities had the highest rates of police and fire department calls for service, most code enforcement property violations. Neighborhoods that are essentially unregulated apartment houses. Well, it depends on the neighborhood, I will s suspect, because we are going into where this has been incremental. Destroy the middle class, make it so difficult for them to own a home that they have to rent. Steal their homes. Any which way. If you can't beat institutional real estate investors, join them. If you sell your house, the buyer might be a pension fund. Wow. Competition is heating up for single-family homes due to demand from institutional real estate investors. A bidding war, like here, um, one company, Fund Rise, or one real estate investing firm uh, which was highlighted in this Wall Street Journal article. It stated a bidding war broke out this winter at a new subdivision north of Houston. But the prize this time was the entire subdivision, not just a single house, illustrating the rise of big investors as a potent new force in the U.S. housing market. All right, there's a lot of players in this. The real estate agents that are making a friggin' fortune and they don't care about depriving individual Americans of you know, the possibility of owning a home. Uh, you know, that's... you. It's almost impossible unless you're self-employed. It is, and well, realtors are self-employed. 
but it depends on that self-employment. You can't, you can't claim that you're not a part of this destruction. The ripple effect of everything we do is really important. Okay, so D.R. Horton Incorporated built 124 houses in Conroe, Texas, rented them out, and then put the whole community, Amber Pines, at Foster's Ridge on the block. At the winning 32 million bid, bid came from an online property investing platform fundraise, fundrise, I'm sorry, LLC. The state of single family rentals, SFRs. Simultaneously, there's chronic undersupply of single family homes in America. So the investors are snapping up all of the real estate. The individual American can't find homes to buy. Driven in part by burdensome regulation and to some extent the lasting impact of the housing collapse in 2008, cut the supply short. The sale of this Amber Pines was managed through a top national brokerage firm. The auction process was highly competitive with several top real estate investment firms bidding alongside Fundrise. They literally, in some of these cases, have knocked the individual out of the whole process. Year-over-year -year rent growth on lease renewal, renewals of approximately two to three times industry norms for residential assets. Okay, so we are now pretty much a rentership society. The ownership is dying off. But how are Americans, so many of whom who have been so destroyed by the pandemic, how are they to rent in areas where the rents are skyrocketing? Now, this is Amber Pines. And when you look at the this whole subdivision bought up by an investment firm, every home bought up. And now they're renting them out. Okay, so um, the Atlantic. Some of these articles are, let, let me just check the dates. All right, this is 2020, July. And, um, well, sorry, 2017. This has been going on, only increasingly so, really since 2008, 2009, then 10 and 11. So another one, when Wall Street is your landlord. This is 2019. 2010, foreclosure crisis, hundreds of thousands? No. It was millions. Even that, and I remember posting on that, it was millions. Hundreds of thousands of families lost their homes. And who would fill these empty homes? The government incentivized Wall Street. Yay! A pilot program that allowed private investors to easily purchase foreclosed homes by the hundreds, by the thousands. Um, from the government agency, Fannie Mae, these new homeowners would then rent out the homes, creating more housing in areas heavily hit by foreclosures. Now, are you going to say, oh, thank you, thank you, Wall Street, for saving my neighborhood, purchasing those homes, renting them out? It's all friggin' deliberate, purposeful 
to destroy the middle class, to make us a rentership society, to bring us down. And Wall Street, well, investment firms, hedge firms, they're making a fortune. Between 2011 and 2017, some of the world's largest private equity groups and hedge funds, as well as other large investors, spent a combined $36 billion on more than 200,000 homes in ailing markets across the country. In one Atlanta zip code, they bought almost 90% of the 7,500 homes sold between 20, uh, January 2011 and June 2012. Today, institutional investors own at least one in five single-family rentals in that part of the uh, Atlanta area. So when these firms come in with so much money, they literally just they call up the realtor selling these places, say, we'll give you, you know, 10%, 20%, we'll give you cash. We won't even require an inspection. And we can close in five days. Do you think the individual has a chance? The Great Reset BlackRock is fueling a $120 trillion transformation on Wall Street. BlackRock, big money. BlackRock is, BlackRock is, it's a front for the Federal Reserve. You know, BlackRock manages trillions, trillions. BlackRock is buying up a whole lot of homes. How much money did the Fed, Fed print for BlackRock to b purchase so many homes. You know, and Greg Manorino says that central banks are buying up the world. That's not an exaggeration. Big money is turning its back on companies that aren't conforming to one simple idea of sustainability. Okay. It's not just housing being affected. It's all companies. Uh, the sustainability, the ESGs, environment, social governance, a whole lot of these investment firms, banks are requiring you meet those Agenda 2030 sustainable goals, not just finances, but how you treat your employees. Oh, it's kind of like having companies under a mi microscope. Uh, if you want loans, if you want investors, your company will be put under a microscope. And if you don't meet, you know, those standards, they'll tell you you got to meet those standards. Could be very costly. So it's climate change. Climate change is their top concern. I'd say. Getting control of the world is their top priority. BlackRock, with over $7 trillion in assets, that's a lot of money. Well, it's also BlackRock that is buying up a lot of real estate. America's largest landlord adds $1 billion for its house hunt enough cash to purchase about 3,500 more homes. Let's see, Invitation, Invitation Homes, country's largest rental home owner, owns 80,000 houses, has been buying at a clip of roughly 200 million a quarter since a pause at the outset of the pandemic. Pandemic has sent Americans rushing to the suburbs in search of a lawn room for home offices and distance from neighbors. Landlords, including Invitation and American Homes for Rent, have reported record 
occupancy and rising rents despite widespread job loss and economic upheaval. Shares of invi invitation, American homes for rent, Tricon residential, well, they're just outperforming the broader market. Of course they are. When you know that our society, its economy is changing and leading to a rentership society, these huge companies are buying up all the homes to rent, and of course, their stocks are just going to continue to rise. Investment manager Nuveen said it would provide as much as $400 million for a rental operation buying houses in Texas, Arizona, Florida. Canadian property firm Brookfield Asset Management acquired a landlord for over 10,000 houses from Ohio to Alabama, it raised $300 million for it to buy more. J.P. Morgan Asset Management is building $625 million for lease houses with American Homes for Rent. Blackstone Group, which launched Invitation Homes at the depths of the foreclosure crisis and cashed out last year with a multi-billion dollar profit. Jump back into this summer in this summer with another two hundred and forty million investment in Tricon. And what happens to the individual? There's an acute shortage of homes available for sale. A dynamic which should help support home prices and keep many families who would prefer to purchase a home in the rental market. Hmm. Homes will be in the 16 markets where Invitation already operates, including Seattle, Dallas, South Florida, all within that fabulous, fabulous uh, mega region, um, America 2050. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please look at my playlist. Look at a, the playlist for Agenda 2030. Yes, our country is being reshaped. And they want everybody in these mega regions and out of all of the areas that are not demarcated as a mega region. Why? They want you renting those stack and packs, those little, little, you know. Or you might be one of the wealthier that will be renting one of these homes, but you will still have every aspect of your life controlled within that mega region. All right, I, I'm getting off topic once again. So this invitation is buying the homes uh, for the cost, an average 300000 and they're looking for people with a six-figure income. Well, that's not a whole lot of Americans anymore. But listen to this. Real estate agent Don Nugent listed a three-bedroom, two-bath house on Joanne Drive, uh, Tennessee. Offers came immediately, including a 200 an 8,000 offer from one couple with a young child looking for their first home, but a competing bid was too attractive to pass up American Homes for Rent. Public company scooping up homes in the neighborhood. They offered the same amount, but all in cash, no inspection required. This is how quick it was. In 12 hours, by the time the house went on the market, 12 hours later, they signed a contract. A month later, put the house back on the market for rent, 1575 a month. It's the new breed of homeowners. It has arrived. 
the middle-class suburb of Nashville, many other communities around the country, big invest investment firms in the business of offering single-family homes for rent. Well, what does it do? That's what it does. Sparked rent increases. Um, it's not just here. Lloyd, Lloyd's of London, they're doing the same thing in the UK, buying up, buying up properties. England, Scotland, they're just, you know, well, regulations, government regulations could stop this. I guess governments want it to go forward. Invest in a sustainable future. This is BlackRock. This is the Federal Reserve's front company. Trillions of dollars, and it's purchasing as much as it possibly can for the new world order. Anyway, um... If you want to know about the ESGs, oh yes, here came across this today, June. Is it June nine? Oh, I'm sorry, it's June nine. Okay, why one bank thinks ESGs could trigger hyperinflation? ESG, environmental, social, and governance criteria. Their standards. Anybody who doesn't fit these standards will not get a bank loan, will not get investors, no matter how great your ideas are. So, all of what we have been researching, posting on for myself, 12 years, it's all pretty much come to pass. That kind of pisses me off. I should have gone a little further in one article. The article, if you sell a house these days, the buyer might be a pension fund. I believe, yes, Wall Street Journal. But you only get like two paragraphs and then you got to pay. So if you can get into the Wall Street Journal... BlackRock is buying every single family house they can find, paying 20 to 50 percent above asking price, and outbidding normal home buyers. Why are corporations, pension funds, property investment groups buying up all of this real estate? Because they're decimating the middle class. Because ownership is a threat. It's a threat to all of the billionaires. We can't let them own a home because ownership, well, it, it, they could actually increase their wealth. We can't let that happen. BlackRock, Federal Reserve, all deliberate. How is it possible to even stop any of this? I think Americans are way too cozy sitting in their little homes. Anyway, all links are below. And uh, I guess if, if you want to sell your home, put it on the market now because it'll be snatched up. But if an individual comes, let's say a young couple, and they might have enough for your asking price, sell it to them, please. Sell it to them. Even if another bid comes in at 20 to 50% over your asking price and you so want that money, sell it to the individual couple with the kids. Please. 
Ciao, guys.